It's 7 1. I'm going to call the meeting of the Board of Selectmen uh, to order. And I'd like to start by welcoming everybody back in person and to say how nice it is to have the full board together and to have some people in the audience. Uh, hopefully, that will continue and grow. Um, our first item of business is, is the Pledge of Allegiance. Selectman so Nordell, would you like to lead us? Is the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All members of the board are present. Um, approval of regular meeting minutes from June 3rd. Does everybody have a chance to review them? Motion to accept them. Regular meeting minutes of Thursday, June 3rd, 2021 at 3 Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Again and again. Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Minutes are carried. Um, Charlie, could you do me a favor and just click the got it button? No, I'm about to see. Um, June 10th, 2021, regular meeting, I'm sorry, special meeting minutes. I'll move to approve the minutes of the Board of Selectmen special meeting on June 10th, 2021. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion made by Sarah, seconded by Marie. Any discussion or corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This goes so much faster when we don't have to do a roll call. <laughs> Um, the July 8th Board of Selectmen special meeting minutes. I move to approve the Board of Selectmen revised special meeting minutes from July 8th, 2021. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion made by Sarah, seconded by Charlie. Any discussion or corrections? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Whoever caught that mistake, that Talk about the uh, email address, yeah. team effort. Um, okay, so hold on one second. George is texting me about the meeting. Um, public participation. This is one of two opportunities for the public to participate. We have some public tonight. So first, I'll ask if there's anybody in the room in uh, physically, if they have, if they would like to address the board. Is there any public who would wish to participate? Mr. Sauerhofer, state your name and address, please. Joseph Sauerhofer, 6 Pierce Lane. I just wanted to come up and try out the podium, tell you all you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, one of the things that folks will notice as uh, they spend more time in town hall is that during the pandemic, there's been a lot of effort uh, into updating some things that had been left unupdated for a while. Um, the introduction of a podium here adds a degree of professionalism, we think, that allows the public to formally address the board, um, which should re reduce um, folks from the audience just kind of hollering out. So if you'd like to address us, please do come up and use the podium. Um, that's what it's there for. Um, you'll also notice um, that many, if not most of the offices are no longer where they used to be from before the pandemic. Um, there has been There have been renovations that have taken place in Town Hall, most offices are in a new place. So uh, if you're used to going to the tax collector's office uh, two thirds of the way down the hallway, she's not there anymore. Um, so just be, be aware of that as you take a look around. But um, there are some other smaller projects that are in the works to kind of add some character um, to the building that we're really excited about and that will be unveiled in due course. One of them actually is behind that um, uh, paper. Uh, on, August 5th, we're targeting um, a, an unveiling of that. That's an art project that was done by a local artist and donated to the town that commemorates the town's agricultural history. Um, and we're going to do um, kind of an art show unveiling ahead of the selectmen's meeting on, uh, I think it's August 5th. So I'm sorry, I, I commandeered the public participation space. Um, are there any other members of the public who would wish to speak? Yeah. Gil, did you have? Comments? 
I, I just want to know if you have the seal on front of that. We do. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Anderson, you're you are the only member of the public um, joining us remotely. Um, would you like to address the board? Uh, not at this time, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Um, public will have another opportunity to address the board later on in the meeting. In your packet, there are two communications. Um, the first one was sent uh, on behalf of the town to the State Historic Preservation Office pertaining to the remedial work that's being discussed for the Broadbrook Mill. Um, they're going through what's called, they being Raytheon, the property owner, uh, is going through what's called a 106 review. Um, and that has to do with the consideration for the historical significance of the property as they go through a remediation plan that's been put in place by a consent decree going back to 2010. Um, the town does not own the property, but we have been, uh, as part of the 106 review process, invited to uh, offer comments. Um, and I included a copy of what I submitted uh, for the board's consideration. Um, I have not heard anything more from either Raytheon or Shippo since that submission. So I'm not sure what the next step is, um, but the gist of it, just for explanation's sake, is there's been uh, discussions about to what degree the property needed to be remediated. In order, on the cheaper side of things, um, remediation to an industrial level would allow certain uses, but not others. That's the preferred route um, that Raytheon would like to take, as well as demolishing the existing structures from the mill. Um, the alternative to that has been limited to remediating it to what's called residential standards, which is cleaner and more expensive. Um, so in conversations and after a couple of site visits, an, another idea presented itself that, to my knowledge, hadn't been part of that discussion in, in the years that this has been um, an active issue, and that is to remediate some of the property to that industrial standard and other portions of that property to that residential standard as an attempt to try and save it and um, reuse the existing mill structure. So if you have the, the I think it's a 14 acre parcel in total, if you take 11 of those and remediate it to an industrial standard, you can then remediate the three acres that could serve as residential where the mill exists. Um, and it, that is a, a means of compromise. So we'll see if anything comes with that, but I wanted folks to be aware of that. Um, and the second one um, was a, a submission that I made to the United States Department of Justice on behalf of Officer Tamara Stepien and the police department um, concerning the work that they're doing in the mental health space as we step up that mental health team. Um, the Attorney General's Award for Distinguished Service in Community, community Policing um, is a, an award that's offered annually. There are three recipients per tier, and there are three tiers. Um, the tiers are done on a population basis, so I think we're in the tier of communities that are below 50,000 in population, um, and they're awarded in three different criteria. One of them is community policing. Um, so I've nominated our department and Officer Stepien um, for the work that they're doing in mental health. It's a very prestigious award. There's only 12 or so awards that are given out annually across the country. Um, but I think that the work that's being done here is meritorious of that consideration. And we'll see, we'll see what comes of that. Okay, we are now on to uh, resignations. We have one. Uh, Rachel Safford has submitted her resignation as a member of the East Windsor Police Commission, effective June 2nd, 2021. Um, this uh, didn't make our last agenda, so I'm, I'm bringing it to us now so we can formally accept that and risk, wish Rachel well in her next endeavors. Vote to accept the resignation of Rachel Safford with regret from the East Windsor Police Commission. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Go carry. Um, Reappointments. We have one, two, three, four, five to be appointed to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Um, this is an annual appointment that's to be done in July. Um, so this is to set up the CIP review process for the fiscal year that just started. Um, and they're going to put together their project submissions for us to consider in April. I'll move to reappoint Robert Leach, Richard Pinton Jr., Adam Mean, Heather Spencer, 
and James Barton to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee for a regular term expiring July 31st, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstention? I was going to ask a question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> discussion? <laughs> I'm sorry, I did uh, rush that a bit. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Um, that used to be one time used to have representatives from various boards in town. Are these people representing, or are they just people to fill positions? Um, so are you talking about the advisory positions? Like, so uh, Len Norton is on there as a uh, representative from, from DPW, and Amy and I are on there as advisory. Right, so you guys are still on there as an Yeah, well, but non-vote. Non uh, and, and that has not changed, as okay. far as I'm aware. All right. So and, like? and, well, and then the second question I have, um, just because the R's stick out, which is okay, I don't have a problem with any of these people, but I want to make sure the makeup of the board is by law that we don't have more than what you required. The I think it's the ordinance that establishes that uh, establishes nine seats, so no party can have more than five. Oh, so, uh, so there, there were this is all fine. Wow. Okay, so we're good. All right. So, would you like to report a vote? Yes. <laughs> what would you like your, your vote to be? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, and then uh, we have an, a reappointment for the Agricultural Commission. I move to appoint, um, excuse me, reappoint Glenn Reichley to the Agricultural Commission as a regular member for a term expiring August 1st, 2024. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? So carried. Jason, can I just ask a question? Yes, ma'am. As far as our process for um, reappointments and appointments, what is our process to letting people, um, notifying them that they've been appointed like, and they need to go to the town clerk's office to be sworn in? I know there's- There's a, a letter that comes out of my office after the appointments are made that congratulates them and thanks them for their service and explains that. Okay. Um, so South Road ownership update is starred. Um, we don't need to go into great detail on that uh, because it is a start item, but I would just say that the legislation uh, lifting the low income restriction was signed by the governor two days ago. Um, so the legislative hurdle there is now complete. Um, and now we'll move on to some of the mechanical stuff that needs to be done at the local level. Cool. Excellent. Um, next up is the American Rescue Plan to include Mr. Krimda. Um, George, are you with us? I am. How are you, sir? I'm well, and you folks? Good. Okay. So um, on Monday, um, we had an announcement of the American Rescue Plan Act grant that we all approved, the Erase COVID grant. Um, Senator Blumenthal joined us, Congressman Larson joined us. Um, Senator Anwar joined us, Representative Hall joined us, and we had four representatives from our business and nonprofit community speak. Um, I want to thank Georgia Kiros from Golden Irene's, Carol Sauerhofer from Abby's Helping Hands, uh, Gina Elton Betty from the Trolley Museum, uh, and Sue Chadborn from At the Dam Restaurant, who all had different and compelling stories to share, um, highlighting the um, urgency around this. Um, the application and the criteria are live on our website. We have started to get some in already, which is great. Um, George, where do we stand on that? Well, we have seven applicants right now. They, what we're learning that we could have been more specific with some questions or it, Perhaps we could have been better at guiding people toward, towards the information we were looking for. But I'm developing a checklist of buzzwords or um, phrases that would automatically uh, bring us into compliance with what's required. So we're learning as we go along. We haven't had an overwhelming response, but I think that it's 
it's been reasonable and I know that there's a number of other people who are probably pondering how they're going to respond. Uh, there's still plenty of time left in the deadline. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to more applications coming in, pondering them, learning about who needs to be contacted to fill in the blanks and otherwise i'm very encouraged nice we have uh seven applicants so far right yes in three days I, i'm not disappointed at that clip because i know my office has had inquiries from another six or eight um so things are going along uh, but i do want to encourage everybody to to reach out to anybody that you you know or may come in contact with that may be interested in submitting because we want this to be a robust thing um so any questions or comments for George? George, are you going to make those seven applicants um, available to the board before the closure, or are you waiting till August 9th? Well, that's a good question. And I don't think that's for me to decide. I'm happy to comply with whatever the wishes of the board is. So, um, wishes of the board are. Uh, I don't have any objection to it. I'm not sure about overall what that means in terms of providing um, privacy or, or any type of uh, I don't know, closure to what the process is before everything is considered in its entirety. I'm, that's not very articulate, but I guess what I'm saying is I'm not sure how to go about that, but I'm more than happy to be uh, totally clear and uh, give everybody the opportunity to have whatever information they're looking to acquire, so. I just know for me um, to get 50 applications all at the same time and try to review them um, in a few days, it's not well, going to give submitted a fair shake. So I don't I'm know. Going, I'm going to do a thorough review application by application the seven that I have here right now are filled with notes and questions. Um, I, 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 I feel confident that I could give a good, adequate review and subject, subject that review to the board for you know, their review. I, I, I don't intend to do anything outside of the purview of the board. I think uh, what may be helpful for for our purposes is uh, to know who the applicants are, but not necessarily uh, have to do a deep dive into what the applications contain. Because as George pointed out, there's going to be a need to correct some of the submissions. There's going to be some missing some missing information in one that's going to be different from another, and, and that, that you know the doing the due diligence of gathering that information really shouldn't bog us down. I wouldn't think, but we could certainly get updates of those who have applied so far. Um, and then once once George has gone through the applicants and corrected all of the deficiencies that there are, um, that probably seems like a, a reasonable time for a deeper dive. I'd, I'd be happy to share who the applicants are right now if, if that's appropriate. If, if you have that, let's do that. Okay, the first applicant that we received was hands-on therapeutic massage. The second applicant was Gary's Connecticut Lawn Care. Third one was Leroy Hospitality slash Comfort Inn. The fourth is, pardon me if I don't pronounce this correctly, but Nona's Pizza Restaurant. The fifth one was Problem Solved Brewing Company. The sixth one was River Valley 
Crowworth LLC. And the last one is the East Windsor Lions Club. All have merit. All could benefit by an enhanced review of their application. And um, I think we're, we're learning a lot about what triggers the appropriate. So I'm, I'm reviewing all of these documents so that the town would be able to defend any question about what we awarded and for what purpose under the interim final ruling. So there are phrases that they have mentioned explicitly, and I'm looking for those tie-ins, and they have made it clear that their list was non-exclusive, meaning that if something makes sense in terms of damage caused by the public health emergency, and this is a response to that emergency or any planning towards the future, that that triggers certain specific components, which I'm listing so that the town would have an adequate defense in any type of audit procedure. So that's what I'm attempting to do at the very beginning of the process. I believe it will be honed and become a better product by the end that it is right now. But, you know, I, I feel pretty good about all of it. Well, that's the important thing. Any other questions or comments for George? George, do you mind repeating the sixth applicant again? You kind of cut out at that point. I only I'm got sorry. Valley. River Valley Grow Works LLC. Thank you. They, they are growing hemp, and I believe it's their first year of production. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Krivna. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the uh, uh, announcement of the Economic Development Commission's um, TV drawing. They've been working on a, a means of encouraging people to eat at local restaurants, which I think is fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna introduce or uh, acknowledge uh, Jim Richards and Gil Hayes. Uh, gentlemen, if you guys would like to um, take the floor, explain what, what you're up to for the public, and then we'll do what we got to do. Just a few. Is that working? It's picking you up. Yeah. Uh, just a few words. Uh, yeah. here, so come down wherever you First of all, uh, thank you for having us here tonight, the selector. And um, my name is Bill Hayes. I chair the Economic Development uh, Mission, and we work in conjunction with the uh, with the selectman's office uh, promoting business. And uh, you see, at, when you were in school, copy. <laughs> I didn't think I graduated. Come on. Anyway, uh, we work in conjunction with the <laughs> with the selectman's office, and uh, it was nice to hear Jason's comment when he says that we're open for business. That's been our motto at the. EDC, uh, and uh, we strive to uh, make that known. And so uh, we are open for business here in East Windsor. So uh, first of all, congratulations on your uh, the crew that helped you get the uh, COVID uh, rescue grant. It was uh, the job well done and well needed in this. And we are interested in the uh, I saw some restaurants were involved. So, and that's what Jim and I were doing with the promotion, uh, mostly by Jim, we started the promotion and we went along with it. And uh, 
I'd like to introduce Jim. He's our, uh, our secretary of the Chief Windsor. Pia. Chief yeah. Pia. <laughs> East Windsor. Uh, First of all, on the American Rescue Plan, you're going to get a lot more applications. Since that was put out yesterday, I was late tonight sending that information by email to someone. So count on getting a lot. Great. The, the next thing is um, the, we want to make sure that the business community knows that the Economic Development Commission is open to them. And we, we don't have a meeting in August. I guess we're going to Vegas, something about spending money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but to, to interrupt there, they're welcome. The, we welcome new members and we welcome businesses uh, to come and sit and visit with us, except for August, we, we are going to Vegas. Yeah, cool. uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so one of our jobs is, of course, to bring business here and we actively do that uh, through various programs, what we're building, what we're doing. Uh, we look at the infrastructure in town. Uh, Gil did a lot of research on the uh, water line for 140 and we're hoping maybe we can solve that. Um, we've uh, been out in, in the community meeting with the businesses. Uh, we recently met with Bastel Plaza. Uh, they've got some interesting possibilities, which would be a real good anchor for out in that area because of where it sits. But uh, what we did the last couple of months was we told everybody to eat out East Windsor. And what we did is we, we, we purchased the TV with tax money. There, I said it. Now we're out of trouble, Tom. And we're going to give that away tonight, but we do need the first selectman's assistance because we haven't drawn the darn thing yet. So we're not just announcing. So what we'd like to start with is we, we first we're gonna do the TV because the person can only win once in this. That's one of the one rules, and but they can enter as many as they want. A shout out to the Abby family. They got a contest going on. Oh yeah. <laughs> Brutal. I, I hope one of them wins, but I'm not getting into that. So if you would, this is for the TV that's sitting in the town hall. What's the number? Uh, 246038. Zero. That's my ticket. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny guy. Oh, I can't even say that name. They came in funny. Capitale. Oh, Capitale. Capitale. That's great. Take okay. him. That's nice. the TV. We will, I will contact them tomorrow. They're going to pick these things up in the town hall. That's right, we try to get out here. The next is, you mentioned Nona's restaurant and at the dam restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. And they are absolutely community restaurants. I'll tell you, I called out for to get some uh, <laughs> gift certificates. It's tough right now for the restaurants because we hit the summertime and while the community came out, they're all out at the beach, not at the restaurant. So if you draw, the next one is for Nona's. Two four six zero zero nine. That's Sarah's. <laughs> he is causing trouble. Jennifer Abbey. All right. <laughs> so let me just put her name. Bill, would you hold that? Let me put that right on there because I'm going to hand these to you when we're done here. Jason. And then the last one is for the at the dam. Two four six zero two zero. Zero two zero. Zero two zero. Draw again, please, Judge Jennifer. We only allow you to win once. So we don't charge anybody for this. So, you know, it's like sending the stuff. Two four six zero six five. Zero six five. Okay. That would be Maggie Abby. See, I told you these guys are cool. <laughs> Great. But Hopefully, they'll go together. Um, and, and Jason, I'll give these to you and if you have them available for the sure. pickup. And I just want to say one more thing. That's what we've got, but I want to mention the restaurants that these all came from since I'm promoting things tonight and I get away with it. Uh, the main fish market was one nutmeg restaurant, Mark's Tavern. That's a new tavern in the town. If you haven't checked it out, they got good food from what I hear. I'm going shortly, don't worry. Main Street Grill, Nona's Cracker Barrel, Nutmeg Restaurant, Sunny House. Duncan, Burger King, Taco Bell, Jimmy Chen's, Zen's, Robert Pizza, another new one, good one. Burger King, Wendy's, I said that one already. Golden Irene's, one of my favorite. Sophia's and Hot Cakes. And my God, everybody, good. We promoted all the restaurants we're going Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Thank you all. 
Um, next is a discussion on the DOT section 5310 grant application to include Mr. Baltesk. <clears throat> You can come up to the table if you want. That's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> not personal space, right? You learn Social something distancing. through COVID, right? So uh, thank you all for having me tonight. It's nice to be back in person and actually feeling other people's presence. So staring at a screen. Um, in your packet tonight is included our grant application for the 5310 grant. Um, that is submitted by the Senior Center every year for a new um, bus. Um, last year, we did not receive uh, the grant, so uh, we are applying this year in hopes of being awarded. Um, so if you have any questions of, of anything that is on your or in your packet, I'm happy to answer them as best I can. Any questions or comments? I just, out of curiosity, um, Tesco Ford in Berlin um, for repairs if the town garage can't do them with dance wheels. Why are we going out there to Berlin? Is it because it's specific? They're, to the, they're, they're the ones who sell it off the state bid. Off the, off the state bid. We don't take it back down. Okay. We fix that at the end. I'm just curious if it was a yeah. state yeah. And we can always go to any Ford dealer, anyways, if we have a big problem. So typically this is a 70-30 grant, and what is it this year? So, uh, typically it is a 70-30 grant, and this year it is a 100% uh, funded grant. So uh, fingers crossed that that does happen, and they are even building in a 3% um, in case it goes over. Oh. So they're building in a 3% buffer just in case. And I asked the question today because during the grant application that we were doing, I noticed that there was no option for a 20 passenger bus and that's what we were looking for. So they actually thanked me for calling and said, oh, you're only one of two people that actually picked up on that. So um, in that, I asked, well, does the 3% have to come from us just in case? And they said, no, it's 100% funded through DOT this year. Um, the only caveat to that is you're only allowed to ask for one bus, whereas in past years, you're allowed to ask for two. When is the last time we got one? Three years ago. Okay, so we have got it before. So things like typically I, I, we do. Yeah. Yes, I get them. Uh, I see that we in the page twelve, the Title Six requirements acknowledgement. Uh, I just had a question about three F, the language assistance plan. Like, so if, if we've done this before, then we've already got that covered. Like, yes, uh, during COVID, that was one of my projects that I completed, uh, and it's all now on the website. Okay language line and, and everything like that should we get anyone that needs language assistance all of that's taken care of and put on the website cool other questions or comments the uh, statistics that were presented um is that normal or is that new this year the breakdown of the um ethnicity of the all uh, writers that's, i know it gets reported to state but it, was that always part of the application yes. process mm -hmm. okay. That's all I got. Nice job. Yeah. Uh, credit goes to Teresa Hill, the transportation coordinator. She's um, the eyes and ears of the transportation at the senior center, and she worked very hard on this. So kudos to her. Yeah, I started highlighting, and then I said, "We're going to continue reading." <laughs> so a motion would be in order to approve the DOT Section fifty three ten grant application and authorize the first selection assignment. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Can we assign a clean one or you want, do you want this one? I'll send you a clean one in the morning or I'll just bring one by if yeah. you could. Um, it's not due to August 3rd, so I just wanted to catch you before you don't have another meeting. Um, so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Um, next up is going to be uh, well, I'm going to ask that we, we table agenda item 9C. Um, we'll discuss that later um, and move on to um, 9D. Can I have a, a motion? I'll make a this? motion to table the uh, ratification of the supervisor contract later in the evening. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
actually, now that Mike D'Amato has logged in, he's, he's double booked. So I'm actually going to ask that we pause on 9D as well and take up 9E to accommodate his um, uh, his schedule. I'll make a motion to go out of order and take up 9E. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? So carried. Mr. D'Amato, uh, we are on agenda item 9E. Thank you very much for, for joining us. I know you've got a couple of things going on. Um, so this is, uh, you asked that this item be put on the agenda. Can you explain to us a little bit about why, what you're asking us to do and what the end result of that would be? Sure. So um, the, the state of Connecticut, the legislature passed, um, it started originally in 2017, a requirement that every town adopt an, an affordable housing plan. Um, this was basically further, further outlined through the recent legislative session um, and the Department of Housing re has released a second round of grant money to give to towns to develop these plans. The first round was um, almost two years ago now. Um, so the second round was announced about a month ago. Um, it is a no match $15,000 grant, um, which is being issued on a first come first serve basis. The grant application is very simple. Um, one of the things that it does require is a, is a resolution authorizing us to go for the grant and then essentially authorizing our office to apply for and administer that grant. Um, we are obligated to develop the plan regardless of if we get the grant. Um, by the end of the next fiscal year. So this will simply give us the ability to do that without any town funds. Any questions? I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. Any questions or comments for Mike? Wanna make a motion? Uh, yeah, so we make a, I make a motion that we uh, and made aware that the board is acknowledging the requirements related to the submission of the affordable housing plan grant resolution. Um, you want to read the, the paragraph? Do you want me to read all that? Just, just that paragraph. Yes, yes. Uh, now, therefore, may it be resolved that the East Windsor Board of Selectmen that has been made aware of the requirements related to the submission of such a grant application and that the filing of such grant applications seeking financial assistance from the Affordable Housing Te Technical Assistance Program by the town in an amount not to exceed 15000 is hereby approved and that Michael D'Amato, the interim town planner, is authorized to file such an application and provide additional documentation and or information as required and to execute an assistance agreement with the state of Connecticut. For financial assistance, if such an agreement is offered, dated this day, the fifteenth of July, twenty one. East Windsor Board Select. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Yep. Um, Mike, in regards to um the governor just signing off on the South Road property um two days ago, um I know your statistics are from uh two thousand seventeen. Um, but in the review, um, is that going to be a problem for us? Because that was all um, supposed to be affordable housing over there. No, uh, it's it's still Mike. I'm going to take a first stab at that, and then correct where I mess up here. But um, we so it is still low income housing. It's just not low income restricted housing. Uh, Mill Pond Village alone pushes us over our uh, ten percent requirement under 830G. And as of the last census on this, we were at 14 percent. Um, so we're actually in, in excess of our statutory requirement by 40%. Yeah, so the, the what I would have added um, when I was talking before, I probably should have added, is that the, the plan, the plan's goal is is specific. It, it basically, we have to look at how the town can increase access to affordable housing. And in East Windsor, affordable housing, because um, we know we have more than 10%, is likely what some people call little a affordable, but really what we want to do is make sure that we're doing what we can to make keep or make housing in East Windsor attainable for all for all people. Um, because we're above the 10%, we have a lot less pressure than many towns. But one of the things that we'll evaluate as part of this plan is that any deed restricted 
housing unit, which is currently contributing to that 14%, the deed restriction is not forever in all cases. And so at some point in time, that 14%, some of those units will start to come off the books as contributing. So we need to look at when will that happen? How do we pretend, prevent that? What will come on? So that's all of the conversations that will, will take place as we develop this plan. Mike, how long do you anticipate um, the formulation of the plan would take if we were awarded this grant? Um, so we, I mean, outside of my work here and with other towns, we're writing a number of these plans for a number of communities. It depends on how fast the group wants to go and the type of, of group that the town wants to set up. Sometimes the Board of Selectmen do these plans, sometimes it's P&Z, sometimes it's a working group, but start to finish, um, you know, with survey, public input and drafting, um, you're probably talking, if you wanted to not go slow, you know, three months. And how long would it take to complete that work without the uh, grant? Um, it would, if we had to do the, if we had to do it all in house, it would, it would probably take significantly longer because it would be dependent on, on our applications. And if, our, if it ran out of our office, we would obviously prioritize, you know, any applicant that was going before the commission. And, and um, so, you know, we, we would still have the time to get it done under the statutory deadline, but might not have the chance to dig into some of the meat of the demographics and do that same analysis um, of real estate and some of the other stuff. Thank you. Sure. Any other, I appreciate it. Any other questions or comments? Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. So carried. Thank you very much, Mike. I really appreciate you accommodating us. No, thanks for uh, letting me jump on and going out of order. Take care, guys. Thank you. Make a motion we go back into order. And take up 9D. And take up 9D. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, 9D is a request from Eversource for the town to grant an easement on a specific parcel of property um, so that they can install um, a new signals and a new pole. That property is at the intersection of South Water Street and South Main Street. Um, it's to the south and west. So if you're uh, standing at Roberto's, it's diagonally across the street on the same parcel that is Wolcott Landing. The town owns a very small sliver of property there, but it is, um, it's required for Eversource to, uh, the easement is required on that parcel for Eversource to be able to do what they want to do. Um, so that is what this request is. Um, it's been reviewed by council. They've signed off on it. Um, and I have been asked to bring it to the board for review and approval. I'll make a motion to authorize um, the first selectman to enter into the agreement on partial land on the electric distribution easement. Has to be something. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Was there a reason it took so long for this to get to us? Like, I've heard this is what's mainly holding up Parkside. No, what's holding up Parkside is OSA. OSA is the Office of the State Traffic Authority. Um, their review process typically takes, I'm told, somewhere between 10 and 12 months, um, and they were looking for an expedited review. Um, this, to my knowledge, does not have anything to do with Parkside. It is an Eversource request because of the work that they're doing. I could be wrong on that, but I have not heard that contention before. I think one's blaming the other. For that, that could, <laughs> there are two entities nobody likes, so that, that's entirely <laughs> possible. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, now we are on to 9F, which is an application for exception for alcoholic beverages submitted by the Broadbrook Fire Department uh, to commemorate or to hold beer garden to commemorate their 125th anniversary um, at the end of next month. It's been signed off on by all of the necessary departments except for mine, which doesn't happen until this board approves the application. Um, so anybody have any questions or comments on the application submitted? Yes, this is 
this is the same evening they're planning on fireworks. Yes. And this, this applicant only goes until 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Just because the fireworks aren't going to be on the same place. So where are they launching fireworks from? I don't know the answer to that. I, I had heard that they were uh, potentially going to try and do them off of COVID, but didn't have enough distance uh, as required by the fire code. Um, and then the other idea that I had heard was that they would be shot off over one main street, which also doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but I don't know where they're doing it. I'm just concerned that they didn't give themselves enough time. <laughs> Eight is too... It's what they've requested. I just don't want to see them getting... There, there are neighbors in the area, too, so that might be a consideration. Well, I actually looked at it, and I want to give them kudos for making it um, a three-hour window rather than a five-hour window. Um, we were talking uh, 40 to 50 people drinking at a uh, public place. I don't know if you've ever been to any of their, their functions <laughs> in the past. Um, I think that's ample time. Um, <laughs> Plus, they'll all them. be wanting to get their trucks back to town, too. So, yeah. 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 So, what I time think is the parade? The parade's supposed to start at five, according to what I read. Okay. I haven't seen any information locked down yet. I, I do expect it will be a big parade. You're saying only about 40 or 50 parade participants. No, that's, which struck me too. Which is, well, because a lot of times, so my understanding is what's happened is that they've invited um, every fire department in Connecticut to participate. Um, but a lot of times what happens is uh, participants will finish the parade and then just drive home. They don't even get out of the truck. Right. Um, so that, that is probably reserved for the, the local folks, probably around Brook and Warehouse Point. My guess, and but, but I like I like the way they cover themselves forty to fifty in parentheses. Great participants only. <laughs> so are we invited to the parade? If you march, I guess you get to have a beer. <laughs> I'll move that the selectmen sign and approve the application for exception of alcoholic beverages at. Spencer Reservoir for August 21st, 2021, three hours at 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Sword. Tax refunds. Move to approve the tax refunds totaling $16,189.76. Is there a second? Second. <coughs> Discussion. Yeah, just to make everybody aware, I did call um, uh, Patty in the uh, tax collector's office, um, specifically um, in regard to KR leasing, um, just because that's a lot of money that's being returned and I haven't seen that before. Um, but they sold all those vehicles and they have, um, I think she said 26, 27 months to come in and do that. So I'm assuming that's probably because of the problems with COVID and all of that, that um, they waited on and did it all the time because he spoke back to 2019. Uh, but. And sorry, do you want me to amend my motion because I see there's a second page here? Uh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead or amend it, whatever you want to do. Any other discussion? Yeah, I'm going to amend it to be the correct amount. I'll amend my motion to be $16,611.44. Second. Motion has been made and seconded, and motion has been amended and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. What did you say you want what? Sir? I'm sorry, what was that? What was the total amount? Oh, um, $16,611.44. That's correct. Board <laughs> <laughs> <Four> finance, huh? All of them. Four of them. <laughs> I just wanted to have communication with my neighbor because I got moved. I know. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Uh, okay, Slackman's reports. I'm told you guys were moved because you talked too much together. 
Uh, so I don't have very much uh, other than uh, to stress that uh, we have announced the Erased COVID grant, which is an ARPA funded grant program that's supposed to uh, help small businesses and nonprofits. I really want to get the message out there to anybody eligible that, that this is an opportunity the town is making. Um, so I'm going to harp on this for a couple of weeks. I encourage everybody to do the same. Um, so, and that's really all I have. I've been uh, kind of taking it a, a little bit easy as my wife and I have welcomed a new daughter um, and we're very excited about that, but um, I'll be back into the group of things very shortly. Uh, Marie. Uh, yeah, the only thing I have, um, I had one meeting um, this uh, since we met last and that was Park and Recreation Commission on Monday night um, at six o'clock. And then I had a personal meeting at seven o'clock. So I wasn't able to make the um, fire, fire department. Um, and I haven't seen any minutes out on that yet. So I don't have anything to report on that, but um, the park and rec um, uh, discussed their financials, um, which is part of the norm, um, and um, brought um, up um, Splash Pat is in operation. Um, the waterfront, um, because of the heavy rains, um, was tested and they had to close it down. I believe it's open as of today. It's not open yet. Um, so, uh, and public participation, public participation by one individual probably took up most of the meeting. Um, and uh, he brought up several concerns, which I think um, were more or less answered regarding uh, to some of the changes up at the uh, reservoir. Um, so, anybody care to get into detail? They're all on the minutes. Um, but I um, want to extend out to um, the board because of most of those um, comments and concerns were being addressed already and or will continue to be addressed. So. Um, that, that, that's all I got. Thank you, Alan. You have a pretty short uh, report as well. The wetlands uh, meeting was canceled due to an accident in town that took out the power here at uh, Town Hall last minute. Uh, then the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission had a, probably the lightest agenda they've had in the two years that we've been working on it. Um, and and the chair was out, so they continued the decisions that they had to make. So. They, um, there was really no new business there either. So it was, uh, after a lot of meetings where they were there at 10 or 11 at night, the steady drumbeat of new businesses or expanding businesses in town, is, they did get one night of relaxation, I guess you could call it. So that's all I have. How ironic that the first in-person meeting is taken out due to a power outage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 And then we had to get a hold of everybody and you know, it, was, it was kind of funny. <sighs> Sarah. I'd like to start off by saying how great it is to see everyone again in person and be back here at Town Hall. I hope everyone has been enjoying their summer thus far and taking advantage of a lot of the new exciting things happening in town, like the summer concert series. I'd personally like to thank the Department of Public Works, the East Windsor Police Department, and both of our amazing fire departments for their prompt response to addressing downed trees and flooding over the past few weeks with the excessive amount of wind and rain we have received. The Warehouse Point Fire District re-elected Kevin Clinch and Charlie Nordell as fire commissioners to serve three years at their um, three year terms at their special annual meeting on June 8th. They elected the following officers at a meeting the following day, Chairman Lou Flynn, Vice Chairman Rachel Safford and Secretary Charlie Nordell. I attended their monthly meeting on July 12th as well. They are making tremendous progress on the Station 1 building addition. Heating units are completed and the electrical work is on target to be done very soon. However, due to the excessive amount of rain we have had, paving and concrete pouring has been delayed. There were 55 fire calls and 17 inspections conducted in the month of June. The Veterans Commission has decided to move forward with their Veterans Day 5K road race this year. The race will take off from Town Hall on Saturday, November 6th at 10 a.m. Registration is very reasonable to encourage participation for the whole family. Fees will be $15 per person and $10 for children, 16 and under, pre-registered. The price will go up to $20 per adult if you are registering on the day of the race and each runner will receive a t-shirt. The Board of Education has canceled their July meetings and will not meet again until August. That's all I have, thanks. 
Thanks. Does this will look like we're slack. <laughs> Charlie, mine's, mine's short too. Um, yes, it does feel great to be back in person holding our meetings in town hall. Um, certainly a good sign that the worst of this pandemic is behind us and that things are starting to get back to some sense of normalcy. Um, last night, uh, the police commission held a meeting. However, I was warned in advance that the majority of it would be an executive session, so I didn't go. Um, but I did hear that the results were that they hired um, one new dispatcher and two new patrol um, officers for positions they have. And that's all I have. That's actually very good news. Um, okay. Public participation. Are there any members of the public who would wish to address the board? I will. Mr. Paul Anderson. Anderson. Hi. <clears throat> Paul Anderson, 89 Main Street, Broadbrook. Um, also chairman of the WPCA. I'd like everyone to know that I know that there's been a lot of difficulty with hybrid meetings and who's going to do what and how do we make things work. The uh, WPCA has uh, signed up with Zoom to handle our meetings, take the pressure off the others that are letting us use theirs because I know it's a burden. It's an, so we'll make it work easier. That will solve our problem, which is good. Um, and um, let's see, the Broadbrook Library is getting a new roof put on because we have no choice. We lost some books in the rainstorms. So we have to uh, solve that problem. It's just informational. It's like a uh, selectman's report only from somebody else. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, let's see, what else? Oh, I don't know. I think everybody's doing a great job. Circumstances are difficult still. There's an upswing in COVID cases. Hopefully that will not get too out of, far out of hand, but we'll all do what we have to do and we'll keep things working. So thanks for being there. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Any other public comment? I'd ask for a motion to go into executive session subject to Connecticut General Statutes 1-206B negotiations. So moved. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are in executive session at 7.59 p.m. It is just the board and there will be a vote. of Ashman Council 4. It is between the Town of East Windsor and the Supervisors. Um, is there a motion? I make a motion to ratify the agreement between the Town of East Windsor and the local 818 of Council Number 4, AFS, CME, AFL, CIO, Supervisors. Uh, and that contract runs between July 1, 2021 to June 30, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. 
the agreement is adopted, I will get it executed and I'll notify the um, union. I do want to say that um, this process was particularly easy because of the cooperation that was demonstrated by the union members and I thank them for that. Is there any other business to come before the Board of Selectmen? Move to adjourn at 9.22 p.m. Is there a second? Second. It's not debatable. All in favor say aye. 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 We're, we are adjourned at 9.22 p.m.